And we found out last night just how much acumen Lamar Jackson and company had because it was interesting. The Ravens had a plan. They had a plan yes. and they absolutely worked it to perfection. The first half, it was all about getting him in a rhythm throwing. The second half, let's just go back to what we do. We run it and down your throats. And, and we dare you to it stop. It was masterful. It really, really. I mean, Greg Roman was like, you know what? Fuck all this other junk. Right. We're try to throw people off. We're going to do yeah. what we do. Exactly. And dare you to stop us. And they could not be stopped. And of course, they get the 27 22 win over the Bucks. And all eyes in Atlanta were on that game because, hey, you want to see if Tom Brady and if Tom Brady is going to actually be three and five for the first time in his career. Check the box. If the Falcons, you're going to wake up Friday morning and they were going to be in sole possession of first place in the NFC South, check the box. And now 48 hours away from possibly also going a game ahead of the Bucks, should they come out victorious against the Panthers. Now, Jarvis, I'm going to tell you, I still feel like the Panthers win against the Bucks was an anomaly. I don't expect to see the same this week. I, I think the Falcons are ready. But mm. admittedly, they have some things that they have to look into on both sides of the ball and kind of deal with. So we talked about Marcus Mariota. And going back to Tom Brady, by the way, just to make that example, Jarvis, Tom Brady was releasing the ball. There was one time where he released the ball at 1.2 seconds. Like yeah, he was getting, yeah. he was getting the rid of that was, Yeah, exactly. The release was crazy, right? And that made me think about Marcus Mariota because I thought to myself, the only way he's going to chin check or, you know, kind of keep Shaq Thompson in check or one of the ways is and company release the ball. Like you've no, got to release the ball, um, whether that's first, second, third read check down or throwing it away or Jarvis pulling it down and just running with it. But he's got to make some quicker decisions in order for him to be the Marcus Mariota we saw from NFC player of the week versus the Marcus Mariota we saw of, wow okay, this is the guy under center. This is QB1. Okay. So how do we see that guy? How do we see the player of the week return Sunday? Not only does he need to make quicker decisions, T, I think that he needs to make quick sound decisions because yeah. just going through, going back through the tape that from last week against the Bengals, there were some things that kind of popped up and I'm just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah you right. could have done that a little That's bit better. Right. Like yeah. those are some of the – because there was – as a matter of fact, uh, the touchdown, the none touchdown to Kyle mm -hmm. Pitts on mm -hmm. the goal line, it was it was almost as if Kyle Pitts expected him to throw the ball behind him. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the angle with it, the way the DB took, he mm -hmm. came around or this type of situation that came down. So essentially, um, Marcus Mariota, the way he threw the football to Kyle, mm -hmm. he li literally led Kyle back into the, the to the DB. Right and now. Now, granted, Kyle Pitts has had some fault there as well because he turned around that way. So mm -hmm. he was expecting to go ahead and get the ball right then and there. But there could have been a situation where, hey, if he would have kept running this route and, and, and um, uh, Marcus Mariota threw the football to him where he was supposed to and in mm -hmm. front of him, and it could have been a, a race to the, to the corner of the end zone. So I think that there are just uh, little things, little tweaks here and there that, that can be made and they can – I think this offense, this passing offense can make some plays. It's just mm -hmm. Marcus Mariota has it, and it starts with him. It starts yeah. with him. Now, you know, I can't, I'm, I, yes, I gave some fault to Kyle Pitts, but it starts mm -hmm. with Marcus Mariota mm -hmm. and making sure that he's not only making the read in a, in a timely manner, but being sound with it. Like, hey, I know that I can put this guy in a good situation to catch the mm -hmm. football if I throw mm -hmm. it out in front of him. Yeah. And so he can go run up underneath it or, if I see the defender right there on right on his inside hip, I'm gonna throw it on his outside. So it's just little, it's just little things, little things, little tweaks. I think that Marcus Mariota can make in order for the, to the Falcons, they can put themselves in a good position to get a win against this team. I think so too, and I think another key component there will be the who wins the battle in the trenches. And one of the good things is this offensive line has been able to be together for seven weeks. That's not something right. we've seen in the last several years. And honestly, we've only really seen one game where we felt like Elijah Wilkinson had an outright bad game. Right. But he and that line are going to have some work to do on who battles and who wins in the trenches. Because when you're talking about dealing with the likes of Derrick Brown, oh, okay, well. So when you think about that, 
Mm -hmm. how the Falcons are going to be able to really kind of dictate the flow of the game. What's the plan? What What do you think Dean Pease has up his sleeve? Uh, or sorry, sorry about that. Dave Ragone, excuse me. We'll talk Dean Pease in a minute. But what do you yeah. think Dave Ragone has up his sleeve and Arthur Smith in order to be able to neutralize that Panthers D, uh, line up front? I think you have to get those guys moving east west instead of north south, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't want your de the defensive lineman playing around the backfield. We know Derek Brown is very capable of, capable of doing that. Yes. And I think that if the Falcons are able to establish some type of run game, the guy or the name that you're going to hear is it's going to have to be Drew Dahlman. Drew Dahlman yeah. is going to have to be able to sustain his blocks longer because yeah. Like I said, just looking at some going back and looking at it to like mm -hmm. there were some plays where if he just gets his butt in between the, the, the running back mm -hmm. and, and, and the defender, mm -hmm. he, it's it's a touch six points. It's a 20 yeah. yard gain. It was just and it's just, just like I said, little tweaks. Mm -hmm. And like that could be the difference in between a minus two and a plus twenty five. And True. because we already know how the NFL is, this is mm -hmm. a fast game and these guys are superior athletes. So they're out there making reads as fast as we can think about what they're actually doing out there on the field. So I think that, you know, Drew Dahmer is a guy like I'm charging him this week because he's yeah. the guy that is going to be the big, the big, you know, uh, the catalyst for this run game to, to mm -hmm. kind of get back on track because he, he's not. He's he's. He is what he is. Let me say that. I, I'm not going to call him a bum because that's not fair. Uh, but I'm what I am going to call him is a guy that I know that you can do it because they have had success running the football this year. So, yeah. and yeah. he's a part of that. He's a part mm -hmm. of that whole group. So it's not just one guy. We know mm -hmm. that everybody has to contribute in their mm -hmm. own way. Now, some more than others. Yeah. You know, Chris Lindstrom, he's amazing. Right. He's still amazing. T. He's still yeah. he's still really good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but he, I think that him. so he could take on Derrick Brown with <laughs> Dalton, but okay, right? But but you know, Carolina, watch the tape. Like, yeah, we're gonna line you up over here, son. This week, like, you're gonna be on this side over here. So Elijah and Drew, they're gonna have to step the game up because. Mm -hmm. Those, they're going to go up against that dude. And I think that, you know, in order for this Falcons run game to get where it needs to be, mm -hmm. they're going to have to have probably one of the better games they've had uh, this entire season. Yeah, and that's a great point because the one time that I saw Leonard Fournette be able to break it north-south was mm -hmm. when the center and the left guard gave him just enough time and just enough of a window to yep. get to the second level. And then he was on his way. And another time I, I saw a couple of plays where, the few plays where Tom Brady was able to get something off against the Panthers, it was the same thing. Just give him one or two extra seconds for them to neutralize Derrick Brown. And then, you know, Tom Brady releases the ball and the Bucks are at least able to advance it somewhat. Right. So yeah, if they can just bring some help there. And one more thing before we wrap up, I uh, just got the word of course, that it's official AJ trail is out. Uh, yep. for this Sunday with that hamstring injury. So that's disappointing when you think about not having him and not having Casey Hayward. But on the same token, no offense, P.J. Walker, but at the end of the day, this is the kind of offense you want to go up against when you are depleted yep. in the secondary. Because, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. one from last week. This, is. this is different. Exactly. And, uh, with all due respect, this different. This hit a little different. Right. It really, really is. <laughs> and you think about the fact that, yes, the Bengals probably took their foot off the gas last week and only scored the seven points in the second half, but the Falcons still had to take the field and still had to play the game and keep them out of the end zone. So right. you got to give them credit for that. But yeah, secondary with everything, all things considered should still be okay this, this week. Yeah, I think they'd be fine because when you think about a guy like Dean Marlowe stepping in for Jalen Hawkins, yes. you got D offer coming back. Yeah, he's, that was like, a he's, good in, one. he's locked on to be a right. goal. That's gonna be solid. I can name the guys that are gonna be those first three DBs they're gonna be out there. You're talking about Isaiah Oliver and Darren yeah. Hall and D offer. So yep, however yeah. they, they mix and match it, they I'm sure Dean P is gonna switch it up because I saw some stuff on tape. I was like, man, these dude got Darren Hall over here, got him back down yep. here. So Dean Pease is going to switch it up. He's going to try to confuse mm -hmm. uh, uh, PJ Walker because there was a there was one particular time when uh, Leonard Carter Leonard Carter what's called him I want to keep calling him Leonard Floyd Lorenzo Carter when he got that sack last week he you know there was a, it was a double A uh, double A gap show blitz 
And the, the linebackers walked up in the hole like they were going to blitz. And then as soon as the ball snapped, they got up out of there. Mm -hmm. And I saw Grady Jarrett kind of come over to the tackle. He kind of flared out a little bit to the tackle. And the tackle took on his block. And he kind of just kind of held him right there. And all you mm -hmm. saw Lorenzo Carter, like a, like, a, uh, like a flying bullet, came mm -hmm. in and got and sacked Joe Burrow. So I think you're going to see a lot of things like that, a lot of yeah. stunts, uh, line stunts. Uh, a lot of show blitzes, uh, a lot of blitzes, show blitz, yes. blitz, blitz. Like, I think Dean Pease is going to switch it up this week because I think the main thing for him is kind of throw, get P.J. Walker yes. off of his spot and make sure that you get him to thinking at the line of scrimmage about what's about to go down. And I think once you do that, mm -hmm. that's going to help mask some of the deficiencies that you may have in the secondary with guys filling in. Indeed, indeed. And you're right. When you look at the D line and you look at the linebackers, as long as they get their assignment and they understand the assignment, you get to PJ Walker. You don't have to worry about the secondary doing a job because the ball will never get to those receivers anyway. If you get to the quarterback in a timely manner. And like you said, the stats may not always show that the Falcons have been getting home, but in terms of QB pressures and actual hits, They've, they've been right there. They've been right there. The only thing, like you said, that Dean Pease focused on, and he talked about this yesterday, was wants better tackling. And, yes, they yeah. better be ready for all disguises and be ready to play any position because that's what he's been leading them to from the start of training camp yes. on to now to be prepared to be anywhere. Now, speaking of being prepared, there are probably five games and ten teams that need to be prepared for a pivotal showdown sunday and if you want to know more about that then after you turn tune into locked on sports atlanta particularly atl day ones then you should go to NFL key predictions because every friday today on locked on nfl they'll give you those key predictions so we talked about vikings cardinals that's a big game saint Raiders, rams 49ers bills packers and of course browns Bengals, because you have so many tight races across the nfl this season so hey if you want to know more about where to bet, what to look for on a Sunday night and even the Monday night game, again, check out Locked on NFL. You can get it everywhere you get your podcast, right? Odyssey app. You can go to YouTube or you can just download it. And again, it helps you because they're going to get betting advice from field experts from our guys over at betonline.net. So check them out today so you'll know what to do about those games on Sunday.